Okay, hi everyone, I'm Lena Ayish, um, and today I'll be discussing the book Talleyrand by Duff Cooper. So to start off with some history about the author, um, Duff Cooper lived from 1890 to 1954, and he was a British diplomat, politician, and writer. Um, today I will be discussing his 1932 book Talleyrand, which is a biography of Charles Maurice Talleyrand, a prominent French diplomat and statesman. Um, so a brief history about Duff Cooper. He was elected as a member of parliament in 1924 and held several government positions, including financial secretary to the treasury. He resigned from the government in 1938 due to disagreements with Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's policy of appeasement towards Nazi Germany. Cooper then joined the British Army during World War II, serving as a liaison officer in France. He was recalled to diplomatic service in 1944 and appointed as ambassador to France. Cooper played a crucial role in coordinating the relationship between Britain and France during and after the war. Oops. Okay, so about Charles Maurice de Talleyrand Perigord. Mm. So um, Talleyrand is actually divided up into five sections. The first one being about his early life and upbringing. So for context, Talleyrand lived from 1954 to 1838. So the French Revolution was occurring during his early adulthood. Um, Talleyrand grew up in a noble Catholic influenced family and was appointed to agent general of the clergy in 1780. He cultivated friendships with influential figures outside the religious sphere during this time, as he wasn't truly interested in the clergy and was kind of pressured into doing it with his family. Um, so some of these figures included liberal Abbe Sies and the future French statesman Mirabeau. Um, a representative of the, of the clergy, as a, rep, as a representative of the clergy in the States General of 1789, Talleyrand sided with the revolutionists. Um, he proposed the appropriation of church lands by the state and endorsed the civil constitution of the clergy. He was then um, excommunic excommunicated in 1791 by the Pope after concertating two constitutional bishops. Um, he wanted to leave the church anyway, so this was fine for him. And after leaving the church, he embraced enlightenment philosophies, which was kind of the start of him getting interested into politics and acting on it. So um, section two was about the French Revolution. So in the early years of the revolution, Talleyrand initially aligned himself with the monarchy. He believed in the need for reform and supported constitutional monarchy as a means to achieve political and social change. Um, Talleyrand served as the Bishop of Autun and he used his position to advocate for church reforms and support moderate political measures. However, as the revolution progressed and radical factions gained power, Talleyrand found it necessary to adapt his political stance. He recognized the changing tides and began aligning himself with the revolutionary cause. Um, this shift in allegiance was influenced by his pragmatism and desire to maintain influence amidst the shifting political landscape, which is seen throughout his career. He often kind of came in and out depending on what the political attitude of France was at the time. So Talleyrand's skills as a diplomat and negotiator came to the forefront when he was appointed as the Minister of Foreign Affairs under the Directory the executive body that governed France from 1795 to 1799. In this role, Talleyrand played a crucial part in shaping French foreign policy during a period marked by political instability and war. This really shows how his early life kind of came into a massive player and influence into his political life as he was forming those connections early on. Um, Talleyrand's diplomatic prowess became evident in his negotiations with foreign powers. He skillfully navigated the complexities of the European political scene, securing peace treaties and alliances for France. Um, notable achievements include the Treaty of Campo Formio in 1797, which brought an end to the War of the First Coalition, and the Treaty of Luneville Luen, Luen, mm. in 1801, which consolidated French dominance in Europe. Talleyrand's tenure as the Minister of Foreign Affairs was marred by financial scandals that damaged his reputation. Um, he was accused of embezzlement and involved in involvement in corrupt practices. These allegations led to his dismissal by the government in 19, 1799, my bad. His unstable relationship with money also led to his eventual divorce of, from Princess Dorothea of Courland. In total, throughout this period, Talleyrand demonstrated his ability to adapt to changing circumstances and forge alliances based on political expediency. He engaged in secret negotiations with foreign powers behind the scenes, often pursuing his own agenda and seeking opportunities for personal gain. And on the right is a photo of the Treaty of Lewin, no, Campo Formio in 1797. Okay, the next one is about his Napoleonic era. Um, 
1799, Talleyrand was appointed as Napoleon Bonaparte's foreign minister, marking a significant, significant turning point in his career. Despite their earlier differences, Talleyrand recognized Napoleon's rising power and saw an opportunity to secure, secure his own position and influence. He increased his diplomatic powers during this time through more peace talks and treaties. Notable examples include the Treaty of Amiens in 1802, which temporarily brought peace between France and Britain, and the Treaty of Tilsit in 1807, which solidified an alliance between France and Russia. Um, Talleyrand often faced the challenge of um, balancing his loyalty to Napoleon and with the pre preservation of his own interests. He often engaged in secret negotiations and maintained contract, contacts with foreign powers behind Napoleon's back. These actions allowed him to gather intelligence, protect his personal wealth, and secure favorable outcomes for himself in France. However, in 1807, Talleyrand resigned from his position as foreign minister as he grew wary of Napoleon's aggressive approaches. After this, Talleyrand became increasingly involved with the Congress of Vienna. As a representative of France, Talleyrand played a crucial role in shaping the post-Napoleonic European order. Despite France's defeat in the Napoleonic Wars, Talleyrand successfully ensured that France retained its status as a major European power and avoided excessive punitive measures. Okay, so after that was the era of the Restoration. Um, after Napoleon's abdication and exile, the Bourbon monarchy was restored in France with Louis XVIII as the king. Talleyrand played a crucial role in facilitating this restoration, utilizing his diplomatic skills and connections to ensure a smooth transition to power. Talleyrand's expertise and experience made him a natural choice for the experience for the position of foreign minister under the Louis XVIII in 1814. He resigned in 1815 due to disagreements with the ultras, a group of fervently royalist politicians seeking to implement reactionary policies. Talleyrand's contributions during this period shaped the course of French diplomacy and had a lasting impact on the post-Napoleonic European order. So the later years, the last section of his book, of Duff Cooper's book, um, after his resignation as foreign minister in 1850, as I mentioned on the previous slide, Talleyrand's retired from active political life um, formally. He distanced himself from direct involvement in government affairs and turned his attention to other pursuits, such as becoming a notable figure in intellectual and philosophical circles. Talleyrand's reputation remained a subject of debate and controversy during his later years. While he was admired for his diplomatic skills and political acumen, he also faced criticism for his opportunism and self-interest. Talleyrand passed away on May 17, 1838 in Paris, and his death marked the end of an era, as he had been a central figure in European politics for several decades. He was noted for his ability to switch allegiances, allegiance, allegiances when necessary to maintain his influence and secure favorable outcomes. This adaptability, while controversial to some, contributed to his ability to survive and thrive amidst the volatile political environment of his time. He is often considered to be one of the most influential diplomats in history because of this. So that is all that I have to say about that. Um, how do I stop sharing? Okay, thank you. Have a good one. <laughs>